Hello, I'm Julie Swenson, Managing Director of Forward Theatre Company in Madison, Wisconsin. And I'm Mike Fisher, a Milwaukee-based theatre writer and dramaturg. I'm Jen Opoff gray Founder and Artistic Director of Forward Theatre Company. And this is Theatre Forward, a twice-monthly conversation about theatre from a local, regional, and national perspective. From Madison to Manhattan, we're excited to share insight into our own company while exploring issues surrounding theater in the Midwest and around the country. Welcome to episode 22 of Theater Forward. Hello. So this week's conversation is about the drama of holiday shopping, (laughs) and we thought we would recommend some fun gifts for the theater lovers in your own life, and no one will tell if you just get these for yourself. Or reduce the drama of holiday (laughs) shopping. (laughs) Exactly right. So Julie, I think you should really get us kicked off Well, of course, the absolute must, and um, you know, a pretty easy thing to do is tickets to your favorite nonprofit performing company. Yes. Well, and 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 you can really give the gift of theater to yourself by giving to your favorite theater company. And, you know, as they say on stage after every show, no amount is too small and no check <laughs> is too large. Um, I actually wanted to talk about, I want to uh, give a shout out to a fellow advisory company member, Jake Penner, who put me on this summer to a book that I then found on Amazon uh, and, and, uh, and bought that I absolutely love. It's called The Half, Photographs of Actors Preparing for the Stage. Uh, and it's a, f- a series of photographs by Simon Anand. I think I'm pronouncing his name properly. Um, and it's a gorgeous, very moving series of photographs on people from Plowright to Radcliffe uh, and British stages primarily. Um, in that half hour, 35 minutes, during which they are preparing um, to go on stage, a very intimate moment, a very private moment for many of them, and that they trusted him enough to let him into their room. And where you got to see in a way that as a fan, which is mostly what I am, I, my acting stopped a long time ago. <laughs> and I can just revere these people who give so much of themselves to to, to give to us on, on stage. So that was a, a really awesome book. And that was inspired for me, and the reason it even came up in conversation with Jake, by a really cool thing that the New York Times did this summer, where they did a whole spread in one of their Sunday issues on the dressing rooms of Broadway. And they took photographs of people 50 years ago and then now, and then paired them using the same dressing room. Um, You can find that feature very easily um, uh, online. Jesse Green wrote the introduction for it. And you can order from the New York Times any of these prints, which if there is a person in your life who loves one of these uh, actors, it would be a really, really cool gift. Ooh, I love that. Yeah, that was a great feature. Um, there were a couple of books on my list as well. Um, not not new ones so much as uh, um, some of these are actually quite oldies, but very much goodies. Um, it, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention um, in the year of William Goldman's passing, his remarkable book, The Season, um, mm-hmm. in which uh, I think it was, was it the 68, 69 yeah. season on Broadway? He embedded himself in the Broadway theater business. Everything from stars and writers and composers to group ticket sales brokers and press agents and designers and every possible type of person that would come in contact with the business of Broadway. He spent a year um, embedding himself. And then he wrote this book. And obviously, many aspects of the business have changed dramatically in the ensuing decades. And many aspects of the business have not changed at all. He remains, I think, one of the most wonderful um, American writers, especially screenwriters, um, Princess Bride. You know, um, he, he's incredible. And so if you love love theater, that is a, a tremendous thing to go back and reread. And then I also have a, a very, very soft spot in my heart for the, um, the many books of Michael Blakemore. Mm. Mm -hmm. Michael is a phenomenal director as well as a writer. Um, I had the privilege early in my career of being his assistant and then associate director for several Broadway shows. Um, So he was an incredible mentor for me in my career. Um, A true gentleman, grew up in Australia, um, but spent most of his life in England and and works extensively um, on the West End and on Broadway. And two of his books in particular that are unbelievably good reads. One is called Next Season, and it's a fictional but very autobiographical novel about um, a year he spent in a, in a rep company in England as a young man with the likes of Laurence Olivier. Um, and it is a tremendously funny and insightful look at the life of a young actor at that 
point in time and that place. Um, and then more recently, he wrote a book called Stage Blood, uh, describing his time spent at the National Theater. And it is so sharp and um, moving and intimate in, in the way it looks at uh, the difficulties and the politics of working for such a large organization. And, and I, I just think he's a phenomenal writer. So I, I recommend those highly. Oh, I loved Stage Blood by by Michael Blakemore, and it's to this wonderful person sitting across from me that you can't see, but Jen, <laughs> uh, who who put him on my radar screen this year. And Stage Blood is absolutely one of the best books uh, that I read in about theater this year, and one of the best books about theater I've read for a long time. You can't put it down. I mean, it is so bitchy in exactly the right <laughs> ways, but he's so kind and smart as he does it. So like he'll skewer somebody like Peter Hall and say, well, you know, who he had this big rivalry with, and say, yeah, well, Peter showed up. For blah 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 with his fourth wife on his arm it's awesome and delicious like that and also super smart um, about some of the productions he worked on he talks about a production that olivier worked on with that he directed of long day's journey into the night and it's brilliant about eugene o'neill i mean that's a playwright i thought i knew i read his story of how that production got put together and i learned new things it was just great a couple more books while i'm on the topic of books in terms of things that came out this year that i really loved i have to give a shout out to chris jones uh, my former colleague back when i was a critic uh, at the chicago tribune whose book rise up broadway and american society Society, from Angels in America to Hamilton, is a nice short, like 300, 250, 300 page read, where he's got little chapters that he, where he picks plays like Angels or um, like The Lion King um, or, or, you know, Bloody Bloody Andrew Jackson and ties them to pivotal moments in American society and in changes within the American musical. And what's great about Chris isn't just that he's so smart, but that he comes in with things that sort of cut against the grain. So like what the things he has to say about American an idiot, for example, which he really, really liked, are super smart and, and really wonderful. That's just a fun read. And then another one, which I will not talk about a lot because I mentioned it in a prior podcast, but Mark Larson did a Studs Terkel type oral history of Chicago theater called Ensemble, which is just a delight. If you have any connection to any one of the million people who have passed through the Chicago theater, many of them on their way to bigger and better things elsewhere, um, this is a great, great book um, to, to give somebody at Christmas or over the holidays. And I'm going to veer away just a second uh, away from books and the magazine that, of course, is our national national theater magazine is American Theater Magazine. Um, it's by the fine people at uh, Theater Communications Group, and it's monthly pub publication and doesn't just uh, chronicle theater on the coast, is all over um, r current events, things we need to know now. Every other month is a full script um, of the, the newest, brightest things that are going on. And it's really a way to keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening in this country. I love it. I, we read it every every month when that sure issue do. shows up at, at our <laughs> office. Um, I had a couple of fun um, gift ideas that aren't things to read, um, but uh, two that I think are really um, cool for different reasons. One, there's a, a, a website called scenerybags.com. And this artist takes recycled Broadway scenic drops and turns them into little bags. And so you can buy a bag made from a drop from Rocky the musical, or you know, you can go on their website and see what musical drops they have in stock, and you can purchase little it's bags. Fantastic. Isn't that fun? And it's such a great way to you reuse it. Yeah. yeah. So scenerybags.com and see if if one of your personal, you know, favorite shows happens to be up there. And then one of the theater gifts that I always think of with a lot of nostalgia at this time of year. Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS um, sells a lot of different gifts to raise money to support the very good work that they do in the theater community. And one of the things they come out with every year is a beautiful snow globe that has the um, like marquees from all of the currently running Broadway shows. And my mom, when she was still alive, she used to buy those every year. Oh. And she's got a whole collection of them that my dad still has in his house. So um, I always think of those quite fondly if you've got someone who's really into the Broadway scene and it supports a good cause as well. Yeah. Um, speaking of nostalgia and Broadway, I'll put those two together. There's a really cool company called White Mountain Puzzles. Um, and you can actually find 
puzzles there, which are like a collage of Broadway musicals, thousand pieces. It is just the coolest I've done that thing. One. In the world. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, they're just they're just great. And another really great thing that's a sort of uh, nostalgic slash um, just fun family uh, thing for me is a game. Um, called Spontunius, um, <laughs> which it's, it's it's like a board game. You have to go around in a circle, but it's based on um, uh, picking a word and then somebody has to sing a certain number of bars. You can be as off key as you want. Believe me, I've played. Um, and, and then if you get a, a song and are able to sing a certain number of bars of that song, I think it's eight, then you get to pick the next the next word. The only thing I will warn all listeners who know Ray Jivoff, don't ever play with him. He will destroy <laughs> you. He knows every song that has ever been written. <laughs> Um, on, on the musical note, see what I did there. That was very <laughs> nice. Nice transition. Um, one of one of my favorite theater related things that I've uh, spent some some money very happily on this year was the original cast recording of Moulin Rouge. Mm-hmm. Um, not just because I could listen to the brilliant Karen Olivo uh, sing her version of Firework every day <laughs> for perpetuity. It's a great way to wake up. It is a really great way to w- wake up. But that's, that is a really fun cast recording. And of course, there are many wonderful musicals that came out with cast recordings mm-hmm. um, this season. So if, if music is your um, personal love in the theater, there are so many great options. And we do love Ben Brantley for including Moulin Rouge in his list of top 10 shows of the year. It was completely over the top and completely awesome. And Karen was a big, big part of that. That's a great gift. Um, Speaking of subscriptions, to go back to something Julie said, and here again, I'm going to be wearing my my former critics hat, but people, we are living in news deserts now in this country that are growing. I mean, there have been a lot of features on that recently. Subscribe to a newspaper. It's like anything else, you know, when you get those flashy ads from The Guardian or Wikipedia telling you to pay $2.65 and you click right past them because you're in a hurry to read whatever it is you want to read. There is a cost to producing news. And it's like we have an idea in this country of supporting things like national public radio. We get that. But we need to be supporting our newspapers. And if we don't, we will not have theater coverage. Um, A really interesting model that just took up the Salt Lake Tribune has just gone to nonprofit status, the sort of first major Mm. paper that's trying to do that. We'll see how that works. They got a ruling from the IRS, which is going to allow them to still do a lot of things that normally a nonprofit could not do. Maybe that's our future. But in the meantime, you're not going to get a tax break for this, but you are going to get the, uh, the ability to actually stay informed which more of our populace clearly needs to be, um, by reading a, a good old-fashioned newspaper, either in print or online, if that's your flavor. Yeah, and if you're if you're local to us here in the Madison area, um, our our colleagues and friends over at the Capital Times this year introduced um, a new membership option. You can still get their paper for free. You can go online to their website, but they now are promoting uh, a, an annual membership where you pay a a very modest fee um, to support this local journalism that's so critical. And I will say they are one of the few outlets in our area that is really making a point of investing in arts coverage. Yep. And that is obviously, you know, self-interestedly important to us. Um, but the Cap Times has a, you know, decades, you know, centuries long um, history of, of providing excellent journalism in our area. And for a really small amount of money, you can become a member and really um, support the work that they do. So, mm-hmm. That would be an excellent gift. Or, or give that, yes, as a gift. And another person is a member. That's right. right. Um, you know, and speaking of subscriptions, this is, um, I mean, we could shout out really wonderful things about all the different um, theater publishers from whom we um, are given plays and read plays. One thing I started subscribing to a few years years ago, which is really cool, is something a Dramatist's Play Service um, does, where every quarter they send you a box of plays. Um, for a really ridiculously cheap price, given what you're getting. And it's a mix of, it's a few older things. I mean, I've even gotten an Arthur Miller, uh, lesser known Arthur Miller in one of these boxes, but a lot of really new stuff. And if so, as you look into the new year, being up on a lot of what's happening with the very, very exciting writing that's being done right now in American theater and a lot of it being done by women um, and people of color. This is a way for me that I've been exposed to some new voices that I wouldn't have otherwise known about. And it's really cool to get this box of plays in your (laughs) mailbox once every quarter. Great. Well, we hope that this uh, conversation has been at least a little bit helpful in your mm-hmm. your holiday shopping, and maybe you found some wonderful things for yourself uh, while you were listening. And uh, we will reiterate that all of you listening to us here are our gift, mm-hmm. and thank you very much um, for doing that. We'll say that that's it for this episode of Theater Forward, a conversation about theater in Wisconsin, the Midwest, and America. 
Thank you for joining us. I'm Jen Upoff Gray. I'm Julie Swenson. And I'm Mike Fisher. Our podcast is produced by Scott Hayden, and you can follow us or share your thoughts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also send us an email at theaterforward at forwardtheater.com. That's E R and E R. <laughs> <laughs> and if you enjoy this podcast, don't forget to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you might tune in, and be sure to leave a review. We're so grateful to have you listening, and we will be back soon for another theater forward conversation. Happy holidays. 